Now, when you're doing calculations that involve percent uncertainties, well, well, why would you do that in the first place? Well, here's the thing. Before, when we were adding or subtracting, we actually take the absolute uncertainties and we add them together. But when you multiply and divide, you can't do that. When you multiply and divide, sometimes you're actually, see, you're, you're, you're multiplying and dividing by things that have different units. And if they have different units, you can't really add percent or sorry, absolute uncertainties because the it doesn't make any sense. Like if you have uh, you're multiplying milliliters by moles per liter, well, actually those two things have different types of units for their absolute uncertainties. So what are you going to do? Well, how about turning everything into a percent uncertainty, and then you can just add the percents together, right? So here's the deal. When you are multiplying numbers together or dividing numbers into each other, what you do is you convert all the absolute uncertainties into percents and you add those percents together. So now let's do a calculation that doesn't even look, you know, it almost doesn't even look familiar right here, but here's what we're doing, okay? We are taking 0 0.0400 grams of NaOH and we're going to try to find the moles by using the molar mass, right? So, hey, what do we do? We actually take the mass and we've got the molar mass of NaOH at 40.00 grams per mole. And now we're just going to do a little bit of calculation that involves uncertainty. Well, now here's the deal. If we weighed out the NaOH and it was 0.0400 grams on the scale, that's good to... <laughs> That's good to three numbers after the decimal, and that uncertainty is three numbers after the decimal, right? So, <laughs> there we go. So, there's the uncertainty in an absolute fashion right there, and here's the molar mass. Now, by the way, when you are not given the uncertainty value for certain numbers like molar masses, for things like... Um, um, uh, the specific heat capacity of something like 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius for water, it is common practice to then ascribe an uncertainty value, essentially for everything that you've got in a, in a, in a question, by taking those values that you haven't been given one for and doing this. Going plus or minus, and then just do this. Go to the number of decimal places that you actually have here, 0, 0, and then add a 5 on. Now, I know that that looks like this. Three numbers after decimal, that's only two. But when you're not given, add on an, an extra point zero, like add on <laughs> as many digits as you have here, and then chuck on that 5 at the end. You know what that's kind of really saying? That, that molar mass there, which is 40.00, could be as high as 40.005 and as low as 39.995. And what's in the middle of those two? Well, 40.00 is right smack dab in the middle. And that's probably the range of that number there, the uncertainty of it. Um, because we, we wrote it to two numbers after the decimal, probably because this would either round uh, uh, down or up to be able to get that number. So we just chuck that on there like that. So that's what this calculation would look like, but here's the problem. See, this is, this is a grams per mole unit here, and this is a grams, and we can't actually take those uncertainties and add them together. What we need to do is to convert both of those uncertainties, which are called absolutes, into percents by here is your grams of NaOH that we got in the lab, right? And now we want to find the moles of it by, by dividing by the molar mass, but the uncertainty here, really here, is taken into a percent is 0 0.003 over that 0 0.040 times 100. That is the conversion to a percent uncertainty. When we take that number and convert it to a percent uncertainty here, which is just this divided by that, this divided by that times 100, the uncertainty divided by the molar mass times 100. What you actually get here when you do that, if I may, is about 7.5%, okay? And then when you, and by the way, that's going to be to three significant digits, so it's that, just for now. And then when you do that calculation right there, I believe that you actually get 0.0125%.
percent. You know, it's a it's a very small percent uncertainty for for that molar mass. What do you do with those percents now? Well, first of all, you do the calculation. That divided by that. Just do your calculation like normal, and you get 0 .0, 0 .001, 0, 0, 0. How many sig digs there? Three sig digs there. No, there's two significant digits in that mass right there, and there's four here, so you're going to keep two significant digits. So the answer is 0 decimal 0, 0, 1, 0 moles, plus or minus. Now what are you going to do? Add the two percents together. So when you add that number to that number, you get 7.5125%. Now here's what you do. Whether it's a percent or an absolute uncertainty, this math happens to be percent, keep one significant digit. So this is going to be what? Well, 7.5 looks like it's going to round up, and so the answer is plus or minus 8%, which really means that, and by can you convert that back into an absolute uncertainty by then taking that percentage and then multiplying by that number times 100? Uh, yeah, you can, but here's the thing. You're never going to be asked to necessarily do that when you're reporting this in a lab report or something. You're allowed to keep it in a percent, so just go ahead and do that, and that's fine. Um, but what's the deal here? Uh, 8%. Oh, and I just wanted to tell you that, by the way, if you actually got an uncertainty value that was, say, 22%, let's pretend that something here equal 22%, um, to keep one significant digit, you look at that and you go, well, that's 22 so what is that really? That could be 2 times 10 to the 1, which is one significant digit, but you can also write just 20% where that 0 is not significant in those exact numbers here, and all of a sudden that's just keeping one significant digit. So, plus or minus 20%, but really this one was plus or minus 8%. So, again, absolute uncertainties, add them together, uh, um, when you're doing addition and subtraction, but percent uncertainties have to be found in, or, and added together in a calculation in order to be able to do multiplication and division. Now, let's just do an energy question coming up right now and how we would plug the numbers in for uncertainties.